we are doing gauss theorem and with the help of gauss theorem we are trying to find out electric field due to different type of charge distributions we have already done the charge distribution in a straight line charge distribution in a plane and today we will do another charge distribution which is very common and that is charge distributed over a sphere when we call it over a sphere then there are two categorization two classes and you must remember the difference between the two one is we will call shell of charge that means i have taken a shell only shell means like a football and given charge due to repulsion of the charges the charge will stay only outside the surface other thing if i take a sphere full sphere and that sphere is made of metal which is a conductor and i give it a charge any place i give the charge that charge due to repulsion will come to the surface like this and conductor will allow it so again it will come to the surface so this one calculation we are going to do it is for a shell of charge where charge is on the surface only we will call it either shell of a charge or a conductor conducting shell in both the cases what is common common thing is charge remain on the surface so don't get confused whether it is a shell or a sphere it may be a sphere but conducting sphere it may be only shell for both the charge will remain on the surface therefore our calculation will be same the other type of distribution of charge in a sphere is when our sphere is a non conductor when we give charge to a non conductor inside then this material do not allow charge to move even if they repel each other they cannot move and they cannot come to the surface so they remain inside like when a cloud enters another cloud they have a friction lot of charge is generated cloud is a bad conductor charge cannot come out so charge is distributed all within the cloud that is this case in those two cases the measurement is done differently this is charge on the surface so i will use that term i will use the term the charge here is sigma per unit area per unit area and this distribution is aerial distribution in this case the charge is full in the volume so here i will use rho that is charge per unit volume and this is known as volumetric distribution okay now i hope this distributions of two types in the spheres are clear to you so we have to study both first we will take this shell and this is very important here is a shell of charge and as i explained the charge is on the surface the total charge given is q charge density on the surface that is aerial charge density r is radius capital r and we want to find out electric field where the answer is we want to find out electric field at any location so for calculation i divide this location into three classes one if the point is outside the sphere if the point is on the surface of the sphere and if the point is anywhere inside the sphere 
So we will discuss all these three and we will apply Gauss theorem for calculation. Okay. Now I take this point P here. Okay. So P is a point and this is at certain distance. Let me say this distance is small r. So now what are the given quantities? Q total charge, sigma aerial charge density, capital R radius and small r is the actual distance of this point P and I have to find out electric field at this point P. Now we start Gauss theorem calculation and Gauss theorem calculation what was our point number one? Point number one was we are supposed to consider a Gaussian surface. So we will start with that. Now I make a Gaussian surface. The Gaussian surface best suited for this purpose is another spherical shell over this sphere. Why? There is a big ball, there is a small ball, this small ball is kept and big ball is over it. Both have got the same center. Then how it will appear? This is radius of the outer ball, same this side and I draw this is outside. Okay. This is a sphere. This sphere has got radius r. This is not a circle. This is a sphere. Please mind it. All around. Now, this is the charge sphere because of which we have to see the electric field here. This Gaussian surface I have drawn because it is has symmetry. What is the symmetry? The distance of all the points from the center is same. So, I think the electric field at every point will be same because if you go for this distance or this distance or this distance, all the distances are same from the charges. So, due to symmetry, the electric field will be symmetrical and then angle theta. This is surface. If we see here, this is the surface, this is radius, this is surface vector, area vector in this direction and this is direction of the electric field that is also radially outward. So both are in the same direction along each other and value of theta here is 0. The same thing we will find here. The electric field is radially outward because it has to be normal here. You remember we made it that on the surface the electric field always remain a normal and a radius is a normal. Therefore, electric field has to be in radial direction. Okay. This area vector is also a normal. So, angle is 0 whether it is at this point or at this point. So we see there is a symmetry of electric field at every point it is same. There is a symmetry of theta is equal to 0 at every point. Therefore this is a perfect Gaussian surface as per our uh, definition as per our custom. So this is our Gaussian surface. Now I have explained E and theta both. Now all these three things how you will write. I will write it for you. So, this is let us consider a Gaussian surface in form of a concentric sphere. Both have the same center of the radius small r so that it pass through point P. E is radially perpendicular to charge surface. This is charge surface perpendicular to this so it is radially outward. With the same distance to Gaussian surface, everywhere distance is same, so it is symmetric at every point. Vector, area vector is making angle 0 at every point. This is symmetry. This is our description of Gaussian surface. Now we come to point number 2. The point number 2 is closed integral EDS because our formula is closed integral EDS cos theta is equal to q upon epsilon naught. We have to put values of everything. So 
of this is our point number 1 and the point number 2 was to find the value of closed integral eds cos theta closed integral eds cos theta is equal to at every point we have made e symmetrical so that will be coming out then theta at every point is 0 degree so cos 0 is equal to 1 that is constant every point so that will also be coming out no integration so now we see e into 1 and integration closed integration is applicable only to small area ds and this small area ds ds this is when integrated then all this area is added up when all this area is added up then we get the total area which is 4 pi r square so this is e 4 pi r square this is we have done calculation for this now we have to calculate how much is the charge within the Gaussian surface charge within Gaussian surface okay visually we can see this the complete charge is within this Gaussian surface and this charge is how much Q so nothing to be calculated simply there is information that total charge within the Gaussian surface is Q then we have taken value of both and now it is the time for fourth step applying Gauss theorem applying Gauss theorem what is Gauss theorem EDS is equal to Q upon epsilon naught then putting values putting values this value is E 4 pi r square Q value is Q upon epsilon naught therefore E is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught Q upon r square this is electric field at distance r you will find this expression uh, appear to be well known to us why because at the very first calculation for a point charge for a point charge q electric field at distance r is e is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught q upon r square this was the expression and it is the same expression this expression was for point charge and this expression is for distribution over a shell both expressions are same and this gives us one very important point and that point is that charge distributed on a shell behaves as if the complete charge is lying at the center simply you have also done uh, center of mass mass distributed over a body act as if the complete mass is lying at one point that is center of mass and if you put that point then we can hold the whole body similarly center of charge is a point where all the charges are supposed to be located so a shell behaves as a point charge if the point charge is placed at the center so remember it we can write it one line charge on a shell behaves and this is true this is true if electric field is outside the shell what we are considering here electric field due to shell of charge case number one I have not written it I will write it here case one what is this first case P the point where we have to calculate electric field is 
आउटसाइड चार्ज्ड शेल दिस वाज द कैलकुलेशन फॉर दिस पर्पस एंड वी गॉट दिस रिजल्ट प्लीज रिमेम्बर इट एंड आई विल राइट इट फॉर यू हियर आउटसाइड द शेल आवर रिजल्ट and this result is e outside is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not q upon r square if we are decreasing this r this r value is decreasing so e will become stronger and stronger we come to the surface here then this r will become equal to capital r and e will be equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not q upon r square where it is on surface and this is our case number 2 yes on the surface and this r is the minimum value of r after that it will go inside but this is the minimum value of r so this e is the maximum value now for a charged sphere where do we have maximum value of electric field answer on the surface remember it outside inside on the surface if you are asked to compare it is maximum at the surface and how much is that e 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not q upon r square e surface this is maximum and this is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not q upon r square now what happens inside that needs a, another derivation and that is very very important derivation and a proof so that we will do in the next class